everyone. I'm Miss Cindy and we are at the Fairfield County District Library today, the main library, for our summer reading Tales and Tales Dinosaur Program. The first thing we're going to do is read a fun book, then we're going to talk about dinosaurs a little bit, and then we're going to do some fun activities with dinosaur, dinosaurs and dinosaur eggs and they're things that you can do at home. First off, we're going to read Dinosaurs from Head to Tail by Stacy Roderick. Dinosaurs from Head to Tail, because our summer reading theme is Tales and Tales. What dinosaur had a head like this? Look at that long, long bone. Now let's see if I can say this right. With a long curved crest on its head, the Parasaurophilus might have been the kind of, kind of dinosaur that liked to toot its own horn. Some scientists think these dinos communicated with one another by pushing air through the hollow tubes in the crest and making low noises that sounded something like foghorns. I bet everyone knows this. What Dinosaur had jaws like this. A Tyrannosaurus. The T-Rex had the most powerful bite of any land animal that has ever lived, up to 10 times more powerful than a crocodile. And with a jaw full of 50 to 60 sharp, jagged teeth, he made for chomping through flesh and bones, it's no wonder that his name means Tyrant lizard. Those. What dinosaur had a neck like this? With a neck that stretched about six meters or 20 feet, the Diplodocus was one of the longest dinosaurs. Such a long neck would have been very difficult to lift up high. So the Diplodocus likely just ate low lying plants and trees. But since it could move its neck from side to side, it covered a lot of ground while just standing in one spot. What dinosaur had a back like this? A Stegosaurus. The Stegosaurus had two rows of sharp edged plates running down its back. Scientists have a few ideas about why. The plates might have been a built in heating and cooling system. If the dinosaur needed to warm up the plates, he soaked up heat from the sun. Or if it needed to cool down, the plates let off extra heat. The rows of plates might also have been a way for the stegosaurus to recognize each other, as well as, as, well as scare off any predators thinking about eating them. What dinosaur had wings like this? Let's see if you know. None did! The wings belonged to the pteranodon, which was not actually a dinosaur, but pterodons were close cousins. If the dinosaurs and lived, if they were close cousins of the dinosaurs and lived during the same time period. They flew with wings made of thin skin that stretched from their long skinny fourth fingers to the tops of their legs. What dinosaur had claws? like this. All right, here's another long one. The Therizinosaur, Therizinosaurus, <laughs> had three giant claws on each of its front feet. The claws may have measured up to three feet long, about as long as a baseball bat. And it's no wonder this plant eater's claws are thought to be the longest of any animal that ever lived. So let's think about three, about a baseball bat. That would be long claws. What dinosaur had legs like this? Do those look like giant legs? And it is a gigantosaurus. It used its powerful muscular legs to chase its prey. The massive meat eater was what scientists call a biped, which means it ran on two legs. It was even bigger than another famous meat-eating biped, the T-Rex. 
what dinosaur had a tail like this? That is an Ankylosaurus. Probably he used the bony round tail ball on the end to protect himself from attacking predators. Scientists think that by swinging its tail from side to side like a club, it could actually have broken the bones of another dinosaur. So those are some neat dinosaurs. What do all dinosaurs have in common? They all have tails. Every single one of the dinosaurs had a tail and they used it for counterbalance. So if you have a long tail, you probably have a long neck because it's a counterbalance. So what if you have a really long tail, but a little tiny head? You fall over. Even the T-Rex, he has a big, thick head and neck, but he has a big, thick tail too. So it balances him out. I just knocked him over. So they used it for counterbalance and to provide stability and the length of the tail was very important. And now they think that dinosaurs didn't actually touch their tails on the ground. They used them for that balance. So they used them if they needed to go down, like if he wanted his head to go down, his tail would go up. So it's a balance and it provided stability. They also used their tails for weapons. So if you have a Diplodocus, his tail would move like a whip. He could do it really fast. And the tails would spike an armor. That was kind of like a weapon. They think they may have used that for weapons. Think of it. If another dinosaur came and was going to bite, that would he would want those spikes in his mouth. And then we have the Ankylosaurus with his club on the end and that looks like a baseball bat. And we just read that he could actually break bones with that. So even though he's a little guy, well, short to the ground little guy, he had a good weapon on the end of his tail. Now, underwater dinosaurs use their tails to propel. So that's a plesiosaurus, and that's they used it to move through the water. I didn't have one of those for a model. Did you know dinosaurs even though in Night at the Museum, Rexy wags his tail. If you've ever seen that movie, dinosaurs couldn't wag their tails because the thigh muscle of the dinosaur, their tail attached right into it. So it's stiff. They couldn't do like a dog, how a dog does that. They couldn't do that. It's stiff and it moves with their thigh, with their muscles. So it was very stiff. It's not flexible. Just like all dinosaurs had tails, dinosaurs almost all laid eggs. Who else lays eggs? Chickens. Chickens are dinosaurs. Did you know that? Chickens are dinosaurs. Biologists and paleontologists have concluded that birds are dinosaurs. Now, almost all dinosaurs laid eggs, like most reptiles do. However, they don't believe the underwater plesiosaur laid eggs. They think the giant reptile gave birth to live young rather than laying eggs. They have found evidence of that. So this one did not lay eggs, but just about everybody else did, or everybody else did except for him, so far as they know. Um, so we're going to talk about and do some activities about dinosaur eggs. Our first one, now if you have the summer reading bag from here at the library. There are activities in here for all of the different programs and all of the recipes for what we're doing. You can do that at home because all the recipes are in the bag. So our first one is using Oob Black. Has anybody ever used Oob Black? We're gonna make some dinosaur, we're gonna excavate some dinosaurs. So you take one and a half cups woo, of cornstarch. Cornstarch. And I'll show you what this does. And 
and then we need a cup of water for in the cornstarch. All right, here's our water. And all of these things mix really well with your hands if you use your hands down in these mixes. So let's, okay, I don't know if you can see, see this. So, oobleck is a non-Newtonian, not a funny word, non-Newtonian fluid. And that means that it's pressure dependent. So, do you see how that looks like liquid? That all looks like liquid. But when I pick it up, it's a solid. You see that? Look, that's solid. It's cornstarch. Look, I can pick up a clump of it. See that clump? But watch. It's, can you think of anything else that's like that? That looks like it might be a solid, but when you pick it up, it becomes a liquid. Let's mix that up a little better there. It's fun to work with, and it makes your hands really soft. But look, see how, can you see in there when I'm picking that up? It's a solid. But as I hold it out, it just becomes liquid. Quicksand is like that. Quicksand, you know quicksand? It looks solid, but it's actually a liquid. And the reason that is like that is because the cornstarch doesn't dissolve. It looks like it does. It all looks liquidy. See how that just looks like liquid in there? Look at all that. And then, it's a solid, it feels solid. It's sticking to my fingers, it's hard to get off of my hands. See all that on my hands? But if I hold it out, it just drips off. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take this. It does come off in water. If you put your hands in water, it comes off. So it doesn't stay on, even though it feels like it would. So you take this and you take a bowl and you're going to pour it in a bowl or a container of some kind. And then if you drop a little dinosaur in there, can you see him sinking? It's like quicksand, did you see? Mm -hmm. Let me put another one in. Can you see it okay? Watch, he sinks slowly. See him? He's sinking very slowly. Can you see it okay? Once you get it like that, you can sit this out in the sun and all of that liquid will dry. And what you end up with is a solid piece like that. And then you can take, let me move these. You can take a popsicle stick or a spoon. Oh, I see something, I see something in there. Take a popsicle stick or a spoon and you can excavate a dinosaur. Oh, he fell apart. Look, I got an Ankylosaurus. There was an Ankylosaurus hidden in there. So that's fun. All right, that was our first dinosaur activity. Our second one is a little more ingredients here but we have this one requires I've already measured these things out but it takes a lot of ingredients but it comes out really neat it is a dinosaur egg so I have a cup of flour and I already measured this out and if you get the kit from the library it'll give you the directions so there's a cup of flour and then this is exactly one cup of loose coffee. So your dinosaur egg is gonna smell like coffee, but it helps make with the color and the, so I've got flour and coffee and a cup of sand. I just took this out of a sandbox. You could probably get it from a beach or if you just have sand at home. So a cup of sand and then I have a three-quarter cup of salt. So there's your 
salt. Okay, now, when you're mixing this and you want to mix it all up, take your hands and just mix that all up. It doesn't feel icky, it just feels soft. So, can you see that? How that all mixes up? All right, then we're gonna get some water. Now, I will tell you, you want the water to go in slowly. So, put some in. And I actually ended up using more than the recipe calls for. So, we'll put that in. You see that? It gets kind of clumpy, like dirt. Put some more in. I don't think that's enough. Put some more in. Okay, so we'll mix that up. It looks like mud. So what you do is you're going to make an egg with some of this. So you've got the bottom half of your egg. Make an egg shape in your palm and put a dinosaur in, it's kind of messy. Then make the other half of your egg. Okay. And then you can sit it out in the sun. Oh, my little dinosaur's foot stuck out. Sit that out in the sun and it will turn into a dinosaur egg. Well, let me show you what what they end up looking like. Now be careful when you're rinse, using water and doing all this, you don't wanna pour this down your sink at home. You don't want sand in your sink. So here are some that I finished. You see, that sat out in the sun to dry and it looks like a dinosaur egg. Now I got a little impatient and I added more water and that kind of looks more like a cow patty or a cookie or something than a dinosaur egg. But then you can take, let's try, let's try the popsicle stick. That's gonna take a while, but it works. It just takes a while to get our dinosaur egg. So we're gonna, there it goes. Or you can take a spoon, that might be faster. Oh, is there anything in there? see something. Oh, I see something. Or I have these little tools. You could be really slow and you could do like do that and then I start to see something. You could pretend that you're a paleontologist and do it slowly. But I'm kind of impatient so I'm going to go ahead and oh I see a head. Let's get him out of there. There he is, I have a T-Rex. I got a T-Rex. Now, I didn't have a lot of dinosaurs when I was making this. Let's see what's in the flat one. Oh, that one's coming apart easy. What is this one? Oh! What is this one? Oh! It's not a dinosaur. Let's see what it is. Rinse them off. Oh, it's two little aliens. They were in my egg. Two little aliens. So you can put anything in your dinosaur eggs. It doesn't have to be dinosaurs. Just little aliens. And I think if I remember right, this one has a shell in it. So you could put anything in your dinosaur eggs. It doesn't have to be a dinosaur. If you run out of dinosaurs, you could put lots of things in there. All right, let's see what our next dinosaur activity is. Okay, this one is you can make salt dough, which is really easy. Um, it is, the, the recipe in the kit was really big. So I halved everything. So this is two and a half cups of flour. Instead of the recipe in our dinosaur, in our June bag, it said five cups of flour, which is a lot. And then this is a little less than three quarter cups of salt. And 
and then we need a cup of water. And this will make salt dough. So once again, you can use your hands. Can you see that? Use your hands and just mix it all up. And that's, the, that's fun. And then you can make Impressions in your salt dough with your dinosaurs. You see that? That's a T-Rex, and it made a T-Rex impression. Or you could walk your dinosaurs. I have some here that I made. Now it was really hard to see, so I used watercolors in my impression so that you could see my dinosaurs better. I did not do that with these feet. I used the T-Rex and stomped him across there and I have feet impressions. So it makes like fossils, fossil records in your salt dough. There's a little purple dinosaur. I think I used the Ankylosaurus for these feet. They're hard to see, but that's fun because you'll be able to see them. It's just hard to see with what I did. Let me rinse off again. And then I think this next one is the one that's the most fun. So this one, you use baking soda and water. And we're gonna make fizzy dinosaur eggs. So you don't have to use the whole box, but just use some. And then you just put water in so that you can work with it. So it's not a certain amount of water really and if you put too much in you can always add more baking soda so you just mix that up no oh, i think i put too much water in need more baking soda might have to use the whole box okay so you mix that up now if you want you could add food coloring right now and i did that in the ones that i made i added food coloring what you do is you make an egg again and you put a dinosaur in it and put the top on the egg and then you can either put that in the freezer and it will solidify or you could sit it out to dry. I set mine out to dry and I'll show you what we came up with. Here are, can you see that? Here's our eggs. See, I put some food coloring in them. So those are baking soda and water eggs. And they're pretty solid. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put one over here. Are you gonna be able to see that okay? Put one here. Okay, I have vinegar in here. And baking soda and vinegar do some interesting things. So let's take that out. We're gonna see if we can't get our dinosaurs out of here. Okay, well, can you hear it? It's fizzing. Baking soda and vinegar react together. Now that's fizzing, so that looks like it's working a little bit, but let's try something more extreme here and see what happens. Remember, there's a dinosaur in there. There, how's that? If you've ever made volcanoes, this is like making a volcano too. You put baking soda. Oh, I see something. I see something down in there. Do you see? Oh, I could see him. Can you see him coming out right there? There he is. Ooh, there he is. There, he came out. And we have a Stegosaurus. All right, let's try one more. How about this one? Instead of doing it that way, let's try, let's put the egg in vinegar and see if that works differently. Let's 
see what happens. For a yellow egg. Whoa. Huh, it's disappearing. I like that better. I think that works pretty good. We'll have to wait till it gets done reacting to see if we've got anything happening there. I'll take him out and see. Oh, oh my goodness, it's tiny. I didn't know it had dissolved that much. There he is. Go for it, bud. Who do we have? Another one. Is that another one? Stegosaurus. All right, we've got one left. You want to do another one? Let's try putting this one in. There's not much reaction left there. And let's pour over top two. see green in there. It must be a green one. Oh, look, the two colors mixed together. The blue and the yellow made green. And it's a green. That was a triceratops. That's a stegosaurus. All right, so we've got two triceratops and a stegosaurus out of fizzy, fizzy eggs. All right. Well, that was all of our activities. And like I said, if you want the June bags, they have all kinds of things in them that will be on Facebook and YouTube for our activities that we have for our June programs here at the library. They are on Wednesdays at two o'clock, or you can sign in after the Wednesday that they are scheduled. You can sign in anytime and watch the programs. You can watch it more than once. Well, thanks for signing in, or thanks for showing up. I'm happy to see everybody and hope you had fun with dinosaurs. Thank you.